Let's take a look at our fifth problem type. Excuse me. These are the problems where you can rewrite them as x to a power. So our first one here, we have f of x is equal to x to the fourth minus 2x to the third minus 5 over x to the third. Well, the x to the fourth is fine. It's already in that form. Then we got minus 2x to the third. That's fine. That's x to a power. This one, if you have x to a, x to a power, you down in the denominator, you can take it up on top. And the sign of the exponent change. So we've got minus 5x to the negative 3. Anytime you have x to a power anywhere in your fraction, you can take it opposite of where it's at in the fraction and the sign of the exponent changes. Well, now for our derivative. Take our power, put it out in front, lower it by 1. Take our power, put it out in front, lower it by 1. Take our power, put it out in front, lower it by 1. So that gives us 4x to the third minus 2 times 3 is 6, so 6x squared. Negative 5 times negative 3 gives us a positive 15, x to the negative 4. Now we're going to uh, take that um, x to the negative 4 back down to the denominator, and it becomes x to the positive 4. Now we want to merge this into a single fraction, so if we're going to add and subtract fractions, they should all be fractions. So I'll put 4x to the third over 1 minus 6x squared over 1 plus 15 over x to the fourth. Now our common denominator would be x to the fourth because these ones are trivial. So we're going to rewrite each fraction with this new denominator. Well, the fif this 15, uh, it already has that denominator. Now our first fraction here, we multiply the bottom part by x to the fourth, so we have to multiply the top part by x to the fourth. Well, x to the third times x to the fourth gives us x to the seventh. Now in our second fraction, we multiply the bottom part by x to the fourth, so we have to multiply the top part by x to the fourth. x squared times x to the fourth gives us x to the sixth. Now these have the same denominator, so I'll merge them together, and we've got 4x to the seventh minus 6x to the sixth plus 15 all over x to the fourth. Let's look at our second example. We've got f of x is equal to x to the ninth minus 3x to the fourth plus 5 over x to the sixth. Now we could use a quotient rule here, but why, why go to that much effort? Anytime you have a single term down in the denominator, you can split them into separate fractions. So I'm going to put the x to the ninth over x to the sixth minus 3x to the fourth over x to the sixth plus 5 over x to the sixth. And it simplifies. Um, remember, if you have x to a power over x to a power, you subtract a smaller exponent from a larger one. So 9 minus 6 gives us 3, and you have x to that power where your larger exponent was. So we're going to have an x to the third, and we'll put a 1 there where the other one was. Now in this one, we have x to the fourth over x to the sixth. Again, we'll subtract a smaller exponent from a larger one. 6 minus 4 gives us 2, two and we're going to have x to the second power where our larger exponent was, which was downstairs. And this is 5x to the sixth. Well, this becomes x to the third, and remember we don't want the x trapped downstairs, so I'll take this, put it up on top, I'll take this and put it up on top. So that becomes minus 3x to the negative 2 plus 5x to the negative 6. Remember you take anything opposite where it's at in the fraction, the sign of the exponent changes. And that's our f of x. So f prime Take our power, put it out in front, lower it by 1. Take our power, put it out in front, lower it by 1. Take our power, put it out in front, lower it by 1. So that gives us 3x squared. Negative 3 times negative 2 gives you a positive 6. 
x to the negative 3. 5 times negative 6 is negative 30, x to the negative 7. We're going to take those um, x to the negative powers back downstairs. So this becomes 6 over x to the 3rd minus 30 over x to the 7th. Now when we want to get a common denominator. Um, it's always your x to your largest power. Um, so we're going to have x to the 7th. I should say it's always x to the largest power when it's set up like this, where you get x to a power and x to a power. Now our third fraction already has that, so we're fine. Now our first fraction, and actually this didn't have a fraction, I could put it over 1. But um, our first uh, fraction here, I multiply the bottom part by x to the 7th, so we have to multiply the top part by x to the 7th. So this gives us 3x to the 9th. This one I multiply the bottom part by x to the fourth, so I multiply the top part x by x to the fourth. Since they have the same denominator now, I'll merge them together. So we've got 3x to the ninth plus 6x to the fourth minus 30 all over x to the seventh. And that's our answer. Now let's take a look at our last example of this type. We've got f of x is equal to square root of x minus the fifth root of x. Well, this is easy to rewrite in terms of x to a power. The square root of x is x to the one half minus, and the fifth root of x is x to the one fifth. Okay, so now we're ready to apply our formula. Let me. That's up my. Eye. I think it's my finger. Um, okay, we'll put our power out in front, and we'll lower it by 1. So we've got 1 half minus 1. Take our power, put it out in front, and lower it by 1. So that gives us 1 half x. 1 half minus 1 gives us negative 1 half. Minus 1 fifth x. 1 fifth minus 1 gives us negative 4 fifths. Now I'm going to take those um, uh, negative x, x to the negative exponent downstairs, so it becomes 1 over 2x to the 1 half minus 1 over 5x to the 4 fifths. Now sometimes it's not so easy to figure out what your common denominator is if um, you have fractional powers. And it's especially hard if they don't have the same denominator. Well, let's get them the same denominator. So this will become 1 over 2x to the... And a common denominator, I got 2 and 5, so it would be 10. Uh, so this would become 5 tenths minus 1 over 5x to the 8 tenths. Okay, now just uh, trying to figure out what our common denominator is. Uh, for the 2 and 5, it would be 10, so I know that's 10. And um, if I got x to the 5 tenths and x to the 8 tenths, it's always going to be the one, the larger one, so it will be 8 tenths. Like that. Now, here I multiply the bottom part by 5, so I have to multiply the top part by 5. And this had x to the 5 tenths. I multiplied the bottom part by x to the 3 tenths. Because if you multiply the bottom part by x to the 3 tenths, you'd add the exponents, and that's where you get to 8 tenths. Now this one, um, the x to the power is still the same, but we multiply the bottom part by 2, so we have to multiply the top part by 2. So that gives us 5x to the 3 tenths over 10x to the 10x to the 8 tenths uh, minus uh, 2 over 10x to the 8 tenths. Well, I'll merge together the top parts now. So I got 5x to the 3 tenths minus 2 over 10x to the 8 tenths. Well, now that we got them into a single fraction, I can simplify that exponent down below. So we got 5x to the 3 tenths minus 2 over 10x to the 4 fifths. And that's our answer. 
And I think that was the last, yeah, that was the last example.